I embarked on what I called at the time an experiment in faith. I basically uh, quit my job and hopped on a bus and came to New York when I was 18. I brought enough money with me for what I thought it would cost me for like two nights at the Y, but not enough to get a bus ticket back home again. It seemed to me at the time that, that these things that, that I read about in the Gospels were either the most important things in the world or they were BS. And, and I wanted to find out which of those things it was. I was looking to work directly with the poor. Ned and Tim worked the Saturday night shift at Covenant House. And while they were there, it was the same young men who kept coming back. And as they engaged in conversation, these men said, what we really need is community. We need a place to belong. We need someone who really cares about us on a regular basis. And the three of us began to talk and dream about what POTS could be. Myself and Father Ned and Sister Jane started POTS uh, formally in 1982. And the values that brought all three of us together and that have continued to bring people to POTS really are gospel values. They are the values of loving one's neighbor as oneself, of treating the, the, the least of them among us um, with, with respect and dignity and doing what we need to help those folks. And those are the values that brought us together and every person that's volunteered here, that's funded here, I think, have all been drawn to those same values. You know, the reason I'm at POTS is I'm a bit of a child of the 80s. And, uh, and for me, I loved watching The Karate Kid and Rocky and the parts of those movies that I really love are the montage. Right? And the montage to me is the idea that you know, today may not be the greatest day in the world, tomorrow may not be the greatest day in the world, but that feeling of hope that tomorrow can be better, I think is encapsulated in POTS. The idea that POTS may give them that opportunity for a point of hope is really, really empowering to me. We go above and beyond, above and beyond, because sometimes it just takes that extra step to help someone, you know, you just, can't stop by feeding someone, you know. They might need something else. So we ask, what is it else that we can help you out with? For me, what sets us apart is the spirit of the organization and how much we value the work that we do and how we deliver that. Anybody can do applications, anybody can do give anybody a meal. That's not what counts. What counts is how you make that individual feel and to make sure that you're actually providing services that are gonna help them. Not for us to pat ourselves in the back, but for the people that we're actually doing it for. There's no us and them. That was really and truly one of the foundation, foundational values of POTS and still is today. Those who serve and those who are served are one. They really help you um, put yourself together because they provide pantries that you can take with you home. They provide meals. They provide clothing for if you have a job interview and you don't have something to wear. They never close because of this or that. Um, it's always open available and um, they always have something there for you. For anyone who is in need of services, thinking about it, number one, it's okay to be in need and it's okay to ask for help. And I think we recognize that you can come here and we may not have exactly what you need, but we promise you we're going to give you hope. We promise you if we can't help you, we're going to put, point you in the right direction and not treat you like you're just another number. I'm proud that the three of us set and planted a lot of seeds. We did, we planted a lot of seeds that have grown into the kind of services that uh, POTS offers today. But it really takes the community to keep working together to make POTS all that its uh, initial founding was all about, to serve a loving community in the Bronx, that that community can uh, have all that it needs to uh, live in dignity.